the common modalities of governance. I'm David Bollier, and I'm an activist and student of the, the Commons. Uh, I've written a number of books about the Commons, and I blog about it at bollier.org. Well, seeing 200 people from the many, many diverse Commonses that they're representing, uh, maybe not representing, that they're doing, in the flesh, and seeing that human variety is just very different from reading about it. And you start to realize almost how uh, utterly diverse the commons is, yet how united in a certain spirit there is. And someone remarked in the conference that there's a certain mystery that everybody is circling around trying to understand better. And I think that was what was going on here, that we all uh, experienced a certain identification with each other's work, even though it was terribly alien. And what is this common denominator that we call the commons? And I think that's kind of the animating force behind a lot of people attracted to the commons of how, despite our manifest differences of native languages, of cultural traditions, of geographic location, can we share something uh, very fundamental to humanity? And I think, in part, that's what makes this such a robust movement, and not just a political movement, but a cultural movement. Uh, that's trying to express a greater solidarity of the human species uh, against, in a time when national identities or political ideologies are needlessly separating us. So that's, uh, I'm not sure if that's the surprise. The surprise is seeing the human presence of that, something that I had an intuition of but hadn't quite experienced. And the experience is different from reading about it. No. The, the main issues of the commons have been barely scratched. This was a conference to assemble some of the leading thinkers, activists, project leaders on the commons for the first time on this scale to see, do we have enough in common? Uh, can we develop some personal relationships? Can we cross-fertilize each other's work? For that, the answer is a, a definite yes. But in terms of developing a policy framework, uh, in terms of working through some of our apparent differences about the role of the state, the role of the market as they intersect with the commons. We have a lot of talking to do, uh, a lot of experiments to run, uh, and we need to both broaden this in terms of the mainstream public uh, and uh, spread the idea of the commons, as well as make it deeper and more complex and elaborate. Uh, which is already in certain types of commons is there's big bodies of either scholarship or uh, oral knowledge about how this works, say the free culture community, the free software world, or uh, the scholarship pioneered by Eleanor Ostrom. So there is quite a body of knowledge, but it hasn't been consolidated. It hasn't been negotiated into a larger framework. Uh, it hasn't been given an active force in mainstream political culture. So those are, I think, some of the unmet challenges that the commons movement faces. Well, it exists in so many forms, it just is not cognitively recognized uh, as sharing some basic elements. And to that extent, it's all in our head. Uh, in terms of developing a new mental map, a new mental framework for saying the tribe or community group managing irrigation or a fishery has a great deal in common with somebody in the first world, say, who's part of a uh, open source free, free software community. And governments being involved in the commons historically has been a little more problematic because government has historically been more allied to market interests and ir only irregularly really supportive of the commons. And indeed, if the government or institutions become too involved in the commons, it can really stifle the integrity of it. it. There won't be the social participation, there won't be the moral legitimacy. So we need to think through, I think, in a theoretical design way, how government can best be a partner or a facilitator for commons is without stifling them. Well, 
it's hard to predict how the movement's going to evolve because it, so much of it is going to be done by people in their very local micro circumstances which will build up higher, which not incidentally is the source of the strength of it because the commons grows organically from rooted social and ecological circumstances. So it's hard to predict, you know, we don't know the developmental theory of the commons yet because it's emergent. In complexity theory, it talks, you talk about emergence where you move from one level of organization to a, a different, a higher level. And when it's emergent, you don't really know or understand those different principles that you're gravitating towards. And I think we are in a period of emergence with the commons movement because we're only at the very early stages of being self-aware of some of the deeper principles animating it. We haven't developed some of the mental categories or frameworks for classifying, situating it. Uh, but we do have enough experience with, uh, I suppose, the most rapidly evolving commons communities are internet communities. And the fact that they can evolve so quickly has a lot to do with their dealing with uh, intangible online uh, circumstances where there's no legacy institutions to, that they have to get rid of. You can build anew. And to the extent that that becomes a direct conduit for how human beings want to interact socially, it's tremendously exciting because you're almost like leapfrogging over a whole body of either dysfunctional or corrupt institutions uh, that are uh, not easily swept aside. Whereas the internet is almost like a protected space for institutional innovation. And I think that's the keynote for what the commons needs to do is develop new sorts of institutions while respecting the utter integrity of, uh, and uniqueness of different commonses. Now th that's a, a kind of concept that doesn't really fit in 20th century thinking where you have a centralized command and control bureaucratic system uh, governing lots of different units to recognize the uh, uh, utter diversity of commons is yet still relatedness. This is a bizarre concept, uh, yet I think it lies at the heart of what the commons movement is aspiring to discover and um, accelerate. The commons in its most salient form is an alternative to market relationships through property and uh, cash exchange and so forth. But that's putting it uh, in a reactive way because in another way it's about reclaiming sovereignty of control for managing resources and developing an ethical even spiritual way of life that's sustainable and compatible with one's ecosystem and one's uh, human community. That's a long and complex sentence but it's about I guess uh, different communities having control over the resources that belong to them and all the dimensions that flow from that economic, cultural, spiritual, personal.